How do games create meaning? Okay, that's a big question. Let me back up a bit first. If a person wanted to share something with a whole bunch of people, say an idea or an emotion or a story, they could write a book or make a movie or a painting or a song. These are all really well-documented and studied forms of media and culture. Critics and scholars have spent a lot of time thinking about how they work, creating theories on how literature, film, music, and visual art communicate with their audiences. They try to describe what makes a film good, for example, or how a novel or poem can inspire a certain feeling in readers. But video games are a lot newer than books, music, or even movies, and they haven't undergone nearly as much critical study. Part of the challenge is that video games are complicated, and there is often a lot happening at any given moment. Players have to process visual, audio, textual, and interactive information simultaneously and seamlessly. Contrast this with, say, a book, often a singular stream of text, maybe with some visual accompaniment, and the density of information in games can feel overwhelming. The other major obstacle is the vast range of games that exist, and how little overlap there is between them. Anyone attempting to theorize about how games work needs to be able to explain games that superficially have nothing in common, from their controls to their appearance. At a certain level, this is a problem of genre, but the effects of genre in games can be much more significant than in other media, like literature or movies. For example, even if you've never read a single science fiction novel before, you could probably still read one if you wanted to with little to no difficulty. This is because books of all genres and types rely on a common foundation, language and the principles of reading. That means the vocabulary, grammar, and syntax, as well as the basic left-to-right, top-to-bottom, front-to-back order of reading the pages. Since these rules are constant and reliable, authors can build on them to create a unique experience. So, what's the common foundation in video games? Interaction. The interaction between the player and the game, in all its varied forms, is the fundamental principle through which video games create meaning. Remember that every other component of a video game is held in common with some other medium, but no medium embraces interaction quite like games do. The many forms of interactivity present in a particular game are often referred to as the game's mechanics. There are a lot of varying definitions for what that term actually means, but here I'm using it to describe any kind of player interaction in or with the game. Now, that interaction can be just as meaningful and communicative as any cutscene, audio log, or text box. To demonstrate this, let's talk about Train. Train is a board game created by Brenda Romero in which players are instructed to load people, represented by little yellow pegs, onto train cars and efficiently move them to their destination. Once a train has been successfully moved, the player flips over a card to find out what the destination was. The card might say Auschwitz, or perhaps Dachau, names of Nazi concentration and death camps during the Holocaust. For players that recognize those names, every element of the game suddenly takes on a horrific tinge. The yellow color of the pegs, the train cars, the focus on efficiency and moving as many people as possible, even the broken window atop which the game takes place. The player's willing compliance with instructions, their knowledge and recognition of the various names and signs, and deciding whether or not to keep playing after the realization. All of these are forms of interaction. Mechanics that Train uses to instill a sense of guilt and complicity in its players. This is obviously a very specific example, and yes, Train is a board game and not a video game, but it's still able to communicate these ideas and feelings through the interaction. The same principles can be found in many other games, in which the mechanics can create an immensely powerful or moving experience. It can be hard to separate the different elements of a game to really see where the meaning comes from, but slowing down and looking closely at the gameplay can be a great way to start. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. 
In each of the videos to come, I'm going to take a look at a particular game and a few ways that it uses its interactive mechanics to communicate an idea, a feeling, or a story in a way that only games can do. Welcome to the Mechanics of Meaning. I hope you enjoyed this introduction, and I'm really excited to share my thoughts on some really great games. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see the videos that are coming up. Feel free to leave topic suggestions and feedback in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.